Um, welcome everybody. Uh, please note that uh, this evening's special meeting has been live streamed. So please note that this meeting has been live streamed, recorded and published in accordance with the Council's live streaming and recording of public meetings policy. To those present in the gallery today by attending a public meeting of Council, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded and published. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice and image and comments will form part of the live streaming and recording. I'd like to welcome you all here this evening for a special meeting of Council to discuss our budget uh, for public con consultation and we acknowledge and respect our complex history and we welcome everybody to build our future together. There are no apologies and there is no leave. Excellent. I think I'd like to uh, preface uh, this evening's uh, meeting uh, by saying, firstly, uh, as our Chief Executive has thanked our finance people, uh, thank you Caroline and Alex for your hard work along with the um, directors and all the work that you've put toward the budget process to date. There may be more. Um, so thank you on behalf of all the elected members. And I know that, uh, and, and what has been good over the last uh, few weeks has been quite a lot of discussion between EMs and, uh, and you guys um, talking about uh, the budget proposal. I'd also like to suggest that, um, that this is a draft business plan and budget for 24-5 and that, that we intend to put out to public consultation. So in that regard, it's not really the end of the road, it's actually the start of the road uh, around discussing uh, what it might look like uh, when we come to our special meeting uh, in June, in the, I think the 4th of June. So uh, given all of that, um, you know, this, this proposal, uh, as I said, is not the end of the road and it is an opportunity for the elected members to go out to their community and have a mature discussion about what, how they see this budget proposal and how their community uh, also receive uh, the budget as it's been presented to them for public consultation. Given that, um, I think I'd like to ask for uh, leave of the meeting so it can be uh, informally discussed. Uh, so I'd ask someone to move in that direction. Councillor Ross, Councillor Goodman second. Uh, all those in favour? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, the floor is open um, for discussion. Or perhaps, Ms Edmonds, would you uh, like to uh, just start the ball rolling with a Something brief. <laughs> sure. Would you like me to stand? Am I happy? No, I'm happy with you. <coughs> thank you. Um, so thank you, Mayor Ross. Um, as you're aware, this is our 24-25 draft budget that is shortly to go out to consultation on the 6th of May for a three-week period. After that, we get into the formalities of the special council meeting to consider any public consultation and feedback. Um, we have a special audit committee meeting to review the draft budget and our ordinary council meeting on the 25th to adopt the budget. So I spoke to Mayor Ross today and said, what do you want me to say? You know, there's a lot of information in here. I don't want to repeat what's already there, what you've all digested. So we thought perhaps I'd come up with five random facts. So uh, giving that a bit of thought, I put together a little bit of information. So the forecasted operating surplus of 1.087 that we currently see in our draft budget is the lowest it's been since the 2017-18 financial year. Uh, the recent endorsement of an increase in road maintenance expenditure by 335000 equates to 50% of the proposed rate revenue rise in dollar terms, and that's when we're looking at a 5.8% revenue rise. The review of the draft budget since our last workshop has resulted in financial improvements both capitally and operationally. Operationally, we're now looking at an additional $164,000 in operating surplus. 
Capitally, we are now proposing a $5.304 million savings in project spend. So this has then resulted in the $5.7 million proposed cash balance as at the 30th of June 2025, which you've seen in the report. Um, just out of interest, a recent survey conducted among South Australian councils regarding proposed rate revenue increases for 24-25 bearing in mind they're all still in the early stages of their draft budget process, uh, indicated that of the 30% of councils that replied or completed the survey, Narracourt Lucindale Council sits in the bottom three in terms of percentage increase. Just finally, I want to say a big thank you to all of the staff who've played an instrumental part in making the budget happen. Long hours, ch challenging deadlines, and at times a stressed out finance team don't always make for fun times. So thank you. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Edmonds. The floor is open. <coughs> Mr. Councillor Island. You wish me to stand? No, you can remain seated if you wish. Thank you. Um, just one thing that we did in our budgets uh, budget review, we did look at removing Hinkley Street from the, uh, the Hinkley drainage, which was approximately three hundred thousand dollars. And I just think that's I think we need to spend more time on that as to whether that's an, if that's a need for the um, for the business district and and for residents whether that's a need that we should be adding that back into the budget. And given that, I'm quite happy with, well, I think we need as much budget surplus as we can possibly attain. Uh, I wonder whether uh, Jones Street, for instance, uh, given the condition of current assets in the central business district, uh, classified as good, um, footpaths 2.4, curbs 2.7, roads 2.2, um, is, is Jones Street in need of renewal and replacement? Uh, the question needs to be raised as to whether this is a want or a need, I think, and I just see Hinkley Street as an example, as more of a need in the budget. Um, so in that, I would my thoughts would be to remove Jones, Jones Street from the budget. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Ireland. I also have a question, if I might. Uh, where uh, in the... Um, the reallocation of funds and the removal of um, projects. So when it says removal of projects, does that remain, and then it says some have been deferred from to 26.7 or 25.6, for example, the ones that have been project removed, have they been, are they disappeared forever? No, not necessarily. Okay. Sorry, Trevor. <laughs> uh, no, they've just been potentially shifted to a another year for consideration. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so come from a master plan or wherever they come from, if they're not included in this budget, they then get put back into uh, the master plan unless council decides that we're not going to do a project, whatever that may be. Thank you. Hinkley Street Council point. Is there a response from there on the Hinkley Street point? Question? Oh, uh, look, um, it's, it's one that was discussed at the uh, workshop um, and uh, without Daniel being here, um, it, it could come in, could could stay out. Uh, there's, I know, I know there's um, funds being sought to do um, some work on the uh, cave drain study. I think some of the rationale was to, we may get some better learning from that study to then what we had to do for some other stormwater works. So I think that was the main logic in it, but also to do potentially do some work with the landowners to improve their own situations where their own stormwater goes. So um, well, it's not necessarily pointless doing drainage works. It, it may not help the landowners if they then if we do the drainage works, then they don't direct their stormwater to our system. So if it's still going to their land, they'll still have flooding issues. So there's probably a bit more work to be done other than purely works that we could do. So. Mr. Stoop, would you like to add some comment around the drainage on Hinkley Street? Oh, I think the CEO's hit the nail on the head. I think there's the study around Caves, um, Cave Road um, needs to be undertaken to fully understand the implications of Hinkley Street and the connection. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say that um, uh, the residents on the corner of Hinkley Street 
it wouldn't matter what they did with their drainage because it was below the level of the road. So um, that's a really serious issue that needs to be dealt with sooner rather than later. So I think it's probably a mixture of stormwater drainage and curbing and private property work. So it's a whole, I think the solution is a blend of everything, but I think we need to have better data to then suggest to all this is this is what the solutions could be. That's that's my thoughts. I think that mirrors Daniels and Rooks. Yeah. Ross, just to add to that, I mean to get back onto the Jones Street thing. I mean, are there other needs we have around the township that we've removed from the budget? That, like I said, I mean, I I personally, as an elected member, perceive Jones Street as a, a want more than a need, and as far as prioritising prioritising. Um, things that we're taking on for the year. Are there other things that we need to be doing? Councillor Brayden. I think Mr McCarthy could answer this question. I think as soon as the rain falls on a roof, I thought the stormwater then automatically had to be directed to the curb. That's correct. No. It can be managed within the property boundary, provided it doesn't create insanitary conditions or go direct to curb. So you've got one of two options. Most people direct it to curb in, in a residential area because they don't have the capacity to manage it on site. Councillor Goodman. Um, I can see from the table that's been provided um, in the report that there's been a hell of a lot of work in consideration in terms of you know, cutting things out of the budget. And, uh, you know, this draft budget has a 5.8% rate increase rise when previously we've been talking about less than that. I think I really take on board what you said at the top of the meeting about the fact that this is the start of the process and not the end. And I think that we have an opportunity to really take this to the community, outlining what cuts we as council have made, but providing that back to the um, community to give us feedback on what they think should be in and out or maybe what they see as a need versus a want and hopefully we can do that in a really clear way that um, allows that feedback to be made plain to us. Um, otherwise, I think we can really go through a process again of weighing up <laughs> merit and there's merit in different places for different reasons but um, I'd like to think that we could do a really good job of putting this back to the community to say whether or not you know they can they can see what cuts have already been occurred to get us to a 5.8 percent rate increase and whether or not they think that should be more and therefore what we do or don't do so I think that's where I sit on this at the moment I really take on board the fact that this is the start of a consultation and we can provide that to the community to give us feedback and direction. Thanks, Councillor Goodman. Councillor Jones. Um, I'm quite supportive of the work that's been done by um, our executive to and the finance team to manage the required reduction in spend that um, good financial prudence demands. And um, yeah, I, I'm pretty comfortable with the budget as it sits, as it sits at the moment, and present into the community as it is. Thank you, Councillor Janice. Councillor Grundy. Thanks, Mayor Ross. Um, I take on board your opening remarks, and that is, I, I probably thought that we might have been getting into the, uh, the rate increase uh, a bit earlier, but uh, I accept what you're saying, I think that's uh, the best way forward. Um, in the meantime, I was just going to ask about the sale yards. Um, I know there, Mr. Smart's comments where he suggests that it's a uh, it's a, no longer a standalone business. I'm, I mean, that's not quite the wording, but uh, I was just asked whether Mr. Smart could provide some additional commentary on what I feel is probably new language around the business case. Um, thanks, Councillor Grundy. So the reason for the comments was just so, along with a few other comments I made, was. I guess it's looking ahead at the challenges that council will have from a financial sustain sustainability perspective over the next um, probably one to five years particularly. So I was trying to just highlight what the various impacts on our, on our cash position and operating sort of positions are. So from a 
cash position, um, I think we'll accept that the NRLE is generally held by council as a standalone self-funding uh, model. Just at the moment, it's it's uh, taken loans out uh, from the LGFA and internal. So what that what that means, and so the NRLE is paying that back on an annual basis, um, depending on what council's cash cash position moves to in year one, year two, year three, if we then become under cash pressure, we haven't got that cash that we've lent to NRLE to use. So it's a it's a point in time matter. Uh, but so what we've lent to NRLE then it, it can have an impact on what we do in the future, that's all. So just just need to highlight that that's that's one of the impacts of, of decisions we've made in the past, rightly or wrongly, that's that's where we are. Did I answer your question? Pretty much. Yep, no worries. That's all right. Just make, make sure I had yeah. so Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I've just got a bit written down about the um, the patrol grading. Um, just some, some figures, and hopefully the community are watching. Um, just to think about uh, the current budget's 105k. Um, in the budget, there's 120,000 increase uh, for um, contractors and 215,000 uh, for works within our own department. Um, so that's a 42% increase in patrol grading. Um, I do believe that is a little bit excessive. I know there's some people here will, will, will argue that and that, that's fine. Um, but I feel we can only do what we can afford. Um, if we lift the level of service to this straight away, it's almost going to be impossible to bring it back to where where we have it, like that service will then be an expectation. Um, the current increase um, that we're adding, which is the 335,000, is a 3% rate rise as it stands to the community. Um, I guess my other arguments on it is if we're going to spend uh, 68,000 through Wheaton's to do a, an audit on how our patrol grading is done and looking at our efficiencies. Um, that's a lot of money if we're just going to go out and spend $335,000 upgrading and, and potentially you know, doing a, a, a better level of service on those roads before we get that audit done. Um, I would think 42% increase prior to their findings, in my opinion, is not a smart business decision. Um, I believe as a council, uh, we were very vocal on the sports centre and, and I agree with it, that it was hard to make a decision until we completed the sports club audit. And I, I think this is very similar. Why are we going out putting a 42% increase in our grading before we've actually done the audit? And we're spending $68,000 on an audit. So to me, it doesn't really add up. Um, before I'm perceived as being against improving our patrol grading, uh, I'd like to bring up my preferred option, um, and that's wait till the audit comes back um, before there is any increases or decisions are made. But in the meantime, um, and I know this didn't really get any traction, but um, I, I, in the meantime, we could ask Mr. Willsmore to bring back his options and costs back to council, um, which I think he reported in October, um, and that was. He came back with the opinion that if we wanted our level of service for grading, that he recommended that as a council we purchase a new grader. Um, and he gave us a list of reasons why. I'd love, I'd love that report to be made public and, and I'd love the rural sector to actually see what um, our paid expert from council has suggested and he is actually recommending that we purchase the grader um, and has given us some fairly good reasons. But again, I wouldn't say we'd um, endorse that but at least have the facts and figures and, and again wait until this audit comes back. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Thank you, Councillor McGuire. Council Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> no pulling the budget apart, but just a point there, whether we purchase the grade or increase the, the grading, it's still an increase in, in cost, but that wasn't what I was going to mention. Um, I look at this at the overall and I take the point that we're trying to land somewhere in a five-year to ten-year um, term and we've got two 
3% rate rises in the first two years and then 3% for the remaining eight. And I feel that if you read um, the commentary around inflation and interest rates, et cetera, it's fairly, fairly sticky. And you, you can't really see inflation going away. And I think we're being pretty conservative, um, forecasting a 3% rate for the remaining years. So I just ran some numbers today, which I actually shared with yourself and, and Trevor late in the day. If, if we were to go with a 4.8% rate increase this year and a 4.8% rate increase next year, and then move that three to a 4% for the next eight years, we actually land in the five year term slightly ahead of where we would be with the 5.8 and the three, and we do land ahead of where we would be in the 10 year. So to me, it's responsible um, if that's, that's the long term position that we, that we want to look at because. Um, I know there's always pain within the community, but we're asking the community, you know, in, in these fairly reasonably tough years economically to do the 5.8 twice, uh, according to the budget and the numbers work. Um, whereas I feel I'd be more comfortable doing two 4.8s and the rest 4%. And I think, you know, you could go to the community with a 4% rate increase on any year, regardless of what inflation is, and I think it's palatable. So that was a position that I, um, that I take and see it being financially responsible in terms of its achievement and outcome as well. And in fact, it's something I looked at this afternoon exactly in the same light. <coughs> and, you know, if you take it out at four, it also takes out the uh, the variability which we have seen during 19, 2020, 2021, 22, where we saw no rate, rate increase, 1%, and all of a sudden, you know, if there's a discussion that you'd like to have around um, <coughs> compounding a problem, you know, that may have actually occurred during 19, 20, 21, 22, when there was absolutely almost no movement. And in fact, guess what? Costs continue to rise anyway, and we may be there now. So a little bit more stability about our rating uh, would be a, quite a good sign or a signal for the community. Uh, but this is for, open for discussion. If there's no further discussion... Ah. <laughs> Councillor Ross. Stay a little bit longer. Um, so, you wouldn't want to miss out again. No, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying, like in regards to, you know, lower CPI uh, or lower inflation um, you know, is what the goal is, but we still don't know whether, how that's going to go. Um, that can change from week to week. You know, it was only a couple of weeks ago they were saying that it was all going the right direction, and then an economist from a from a bank called Judo came out, and, and then all of a sudden the, the rhetoric changed again. Um, but he's yeah, not a not a major, um, but apparently he's still quite a credible um, reference source. So that's how quickly those sort of opinions can change. Now, in regards to saying we'll do 4.8 this year and 4.8 next year to try and average it out, well, we don't. We're not budgeting for. Yes, we're budgeting using the long-term financial plan for you know what it could potentially look like like a budget, but we're not. You, it's almost like you're hedging your bets to a 4.8 for this year and we'll do it for next year. Well, we don't know what next year is going to be like. So I'd rather, um, from where we've gone in the past, look, I've been a big advocate for always being below, around the CPO and down below. I always have been like so that. So that actually means that, it, you know, you're working on a maintenance budget yeah. pretty yeah. much. And that's what we've been. And, and to, it was probably with Mr Smart coming on board, that was probably one of our... Our goals as council was to really try and fine tune the expenses of it and the operating expenses, which he's done. He's and they've done an admirable job. Um, they've they've shaved it. They've they've rationalised when when people leave, they look at readjusting positions. It's it, it's been a big focus and it's been done. I think where the concern is now is is that we're sitting at at four point eight percent potentially as a, as a as where um, the where the figures are sitting. Um, there's not much more room in, in, in shaving in the operating side of things. So up until now, we've been working within their means. Okay, the capital budgets can be changed, but the operation budgets have been pushed and prodded a fair bit. We've, we've gone and prodded it a fair bit by chucking in a, a, an increase in a service level that, it, that itself is a 3% rise. Okay, so we've got, you know, we're already, everyone's already working on four and a half, uh, 4.8 as an increase, and all of a sudden we're, we've whacked in another 3% you know, in there to try and work. We've eaten our fat into it, into our fat, into that, into that, um, uh, that assumption that we're using going forward. So I think good business sense is that we look at 
at least positioning ourselves where we're not paying catch up in the next year or two years. Okay, it could go down to 3% and we can average it out at 4%, but the thing is we don't know. And it could be like, it could be at 4.8 for another few years yet. So I'd rather look at a slightly higher where it is at the 5.8, which has been against the grain from where I've come from in the past, but I think we just need to be quite prudent in what we do. And I think presented at what we've got as is, as least as it provides an opportunity to talk to the community about it, and so they can understand, we can bring them on for the ride for them to understand what we're going through. But I think, given that we're throwing something in there that is actually you know, eating into our, into our uh, 4.8 already, I don't think we should be sticking at 4.8 because of that reason. Because it's you know, we're we're banking on rages going up, which is going across nationally. Um, that's all going to happen in the first of July, so that's something you can't change. So it's happening. So, so to not uh, allow for that, I think that's not good business sense, to be honest. So, um, but in regards to what we we'll talk about in the drainage side of things, um, you might remove it from the budget. Is there, is there an opportunity where if there is further research that needs to be done, is there an opportunity just to leave something in the budget just for the continued research for that project? Because it might not be ready to be done next year, it could be done the year after, but if there's a bit of research that could be still continue to be yeah. done. So I think what actually, you know, with on that particular point, and I take Councillor Ireland's point on that, you know, is there something, and perhaps, you know, we can ask, you know, is there something that can help inform uh, the elected members um, by you know with a with a paper prior to the special meeting on the fourth of June that might help inform them around. Yeah, just, uh, it might be just, you just need an allocation to allow for the staff to continue to keep going with their research and what they need to do. To me, that makes sense. Yeah. So um, because I, I don't think it might be they, what's the point of jumping in and doing something when they haven't researched it to understand exactly. You've, we've touched on three different things that could be the cause of the flooding. Um, let's just eliminate all those before we actually do a decision of doing that. Oh, yeah. sure enough. But of course, you don't live on Hinkley Street. No, no. <laughs> the thing is, I'd rather get it fixed first rather than having a, a, a short-term fix and only to still have the issue still yeah. there. Yeah. So, yeah. And, I, and, and I do note, with, um, in regard to Jane Street, you know, it's a perfectly good road. Yeah. But I, look, I, before I've finished, well done to the staff. Thank you. Councillor Ross and Councillor Crossling, I'm sure yeah, you're... I'm just going to mention that I'm happy um, to go out to consultation with our draft business plan and budget. Um, I do believe we need to at least go with a minimum of 5.8 to our community. Um, only as of yesterday, the Kurum District Council have proposed an increase of 8.52%. I'm pretty sure they're not loving taking that to their community. Um, and I believe if we want to continue our service levels and what we provide to our community, um, like I've said, it's on us as elected members to educate our community on why we need a 5.8% increase. Um, no increases are welcome, but we're doing it to maintain the service levels that we as an elected member group want to deliver to our community. Um, so I believe that we should at least go out to the community with the 5.8 as a minimum. And um, let's keep making some sound financial position, uh, yeah, decisions for a sound financial position um, for the long term, not just the short term. Thank you, Councillor Crossing. Is there any further? Mr. Smart, what would I be able to say? Given an opportunity, Mr. Smart. Given an opportunity. It's, uh, uh, good discussion, good, uh, good, idea, good, good ideas, good suggestions. So um, some of the suggested changes, etc., cetera, will um, potentially increase our cash position, but as, as with some of the notes uh, made in uh, Ms Edmonds's report with my comments, we also probably need to have a, an eye on our operating surplus as well. So as uh, indicated earlier in the, the fun facts, that's the lowest it's been for a number of years. So if we go down to 4.8, um, that will take another roughly hundred odd thousand off that. So for the first time for a long time, that will come in under a million dollars. So it's a challenging budget. It's probably the hardest budget we've worked on for a, a while. And I can see probably a next budget and probably the one after that also being relatively challenging. Um, but yeah, we need, we need to keep an eye on not just the cash position, but our operating, because that's where 
your depreciation is funded from, and that's where your cash is accumulated for new new projects, etc. So, if that gets too tight, you lose council loses its ability to have any uh, flexibility in what it does. It loses its ability to actually do, renew your assets, which is probably one of one of our most important roles, whether it be roads, buildings, or whatever assets we already have. That's setting aside any new projects. So. Four point, I mean, I'm, I'm suggesting we, we go with 5.8. I appreciate Councillor Turner's um, suggestions of the 4.8, 4.8 and then 4, that by the end of the 10 years, um, I think our figure's pretty well matched. It's about 1.1 or 1.2 million additional at year, at year 10. Yeah, our figure's altered slightly, but over 10 years, it's not much. Um, so it gives you a positive result over a 10 year period. It's just, I think the next two years is probably a, a couple very challenging years from a cash basis and an operating position. We're about to go out and do the uh, reval of um, our road network. Uh, last time we did that back in 2018, from memory, um, the revaluations decreased. So that actually decreased our um, depreciation by about a million dollars. I very much doubt that will be the case this time. If you're given the so the revaluation is based on what it costs us to replace a road. So I'm only assuming, and I'm not a valuer, that that will go up, which will then increase our depreciation. So that is funded from your operating statement. So overnight, that could potentially add a million dollars to your operating expenses, which then would potentially put us into operating deficit. So we don't know that answer yet, but that's our job to provide the information to, to predict as best as we can uh, what the cause and effect will be. And as I've said in the report, um, it's very difficult to do financial repair on your finance position in one year. It will generally take one to three to, to short term fix. It's normally a five, six, seven, eight to 10 to properly um, do budget repair. So. Budgeting is hard, being an elected member is difficult, uh, particularly everyone loves paying taxes. Um, it's a message you have to, we all have to collectively deliver whatever position we, we land on. But um, over the next uh, month or two, uh, just to keep those challenges in mind, uh, for if you decide A, B or C, this is the cause and effect and this is what it could do in year two, three or four. Um, as Councillor Ross has said, our operating uh, position is now fairly lean. Um, after the last budget uh, workshop, um, I went through that line by line with every manager, and normally you can find find a bit in there. Uh, this time we found very little. Um, so any so any reduction in your operating then generally has to come at uh, at a service. So if the operating position decreases, uh, we'd be coming back to council and say, well, which service do you not? want to now do and that's always hard because people the community get used to the services you provide whether it be roads libraries whatever it is parks and gardens we can't we can't now do more with what we've got we we have less staff now than when I started so we do it we're already doing more with more with less um, so it gets to the case where if you want to adjust your operating you actually have to stop doing a service and that, and, and that is not easy. So. Yeah, anything to add, Mr. Smart? That's probably probably enough from me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ray, Ray of Sunshine to finish. How's that? Can I put in there? Of course. Um, I did do a little few figures and a 5.8% um, increase over our 6,578 rateable properties on an average would be $17 and $73 extra over the year. I know that is obviously not going to be on everyone's, but as an average, 5.8% is $17 and 73 cents extra a year. I remember when I was doing economics, there were lies, <laughs> damn lies and statistics. <laughs> we bank that. <laughs> I'll take <back> 780. <laughs> Uh, at that juncture, I think uh, I'd ask someone to move that we move out of, uh, move back into meeting procedure. Uh, Councillor Ross and Goodman again, and all those in favour, carried. Thank you very much. Uh, we've had very good discussion. Um, I think it's appropriate uh, at this juncture if uh, someone would like to uh, move the annual business plan and budget for 24-5. Councillor Ross, Councillor Dennis. 
discussion? There being none, I put the motion. All those in favour? Carried, thank you. There being no further business, thank you very much. The meeting is closed.